Okay, now we're all set to unwrap the last couple of layers of object-oriented JavaScript. And I'm going to start by the employee example again. So let's say I have a function employee, which is just an empty function. For now, that should be good. And I'm going to have a new EMP equals, sorry, var EMP equals new employee. Now, what are the objects that are created as a result of these couple of lines of JavaScript that I've added? One is the employee function object, of course, and then there is the prototype object for employee. And now I have the EMP, which is created using new employee, who's done the proto points to the employee's prototype. So I'm sure you'd agree that the picture looks something like this. It's the employee function, the employee's prototype, and then an instance who's done the proto points to the prototype. Now, remember in the last video, I told you how if you're not using an explicit constructor, then there is this default constructor function, which is the object function. And that happens for any, for any object that's created without an explicit constructor function. Now, this EMP object was created by calling new on this employee function. So this has a dender proto, which points to this prototype. But what you should realize is that the employee's prototype object, this one over here, is actually an object as well, right? So this is an object which we didn't create by calling a new on anything. So now the question is, what was the function that created this object? Well, it turns out whenever there's a prototype object that's created for a function that you write, this prototype is actually created by calling new object. So since this is an automatic object that was created, this is called using new object, which is the object function in constructor mode. So this turns out has a Dundo proto property as well, which points to the object prototype. So this is similar to just creating an object using double curlies. It's Dundo proto points to the object's prototype. Okay, so this is happening behind the scenes. You didn't create this prototype object. It was created for you when you created the employee function. So when this prototype object was created for you, it was created using the object function in constructor mode, which is why the Dunder proto points to the object's prototype. So what you have here is kind of like a hierarchy. So you have your employee object, whose Dunder proto points to the employee's prototype, and the employee prototype's Dunder proto points to the object's prototype. Now that you have this picture in mind, let's say I make a property reference on the EMP object that we just created. Let's say I do something like this, emp.test. Well, I get back undefined. And we've seen that how the JavaScript engine checks emp first. And if it doesn't find it, it checks the emp's prototype object using Dunder proto. And if it doesn't find that, that's where you get back undefined. If I were to switch to the diagram again, the JavaScript engine first checks this object. Say, hey, emp, do you have a property called test? Doesn't find it, it goes to this object. Hey, employee's prototype object, do you have a property called test? Well, if it doesn't find it, guess what happens? This is still an object reference. So this way, the JavaScript engine checking this is no different from the JavaScript engine checking this. So just want to check this. If the employee's prototype doesn't have it, guess what happens? It checks the Dunder proto and it goes to this object. So you say, objects prototype, do you have a property called test? So if this doesn't find it, that's when it returns undefined. While we have seen this pattern all along, what's important to notice here is that there's actually a third hidden level. There's this third object that is checked for when there's a property reference, and this happens for every prototype, and that is the object's prototype. So let me demonstrate that by putting some properties on both these prototypes and verifying that it does work. Let's say I do a emp.prop employee. So if I were to access emp.prop, I'm gonna get back employee, plain and simple. Now let me add a property on the emp's prototype object. So I'm gonna get emp.dunderproto. I'm gonna set a property on this parent prop. I'm gonna call it parent of employee. So if I were to access emp.parentprop, I'm going to get that back because it doesn't find it in EMP. It goes and checks the parent. Now, I can set another property on the grandparent, right? So it's the dunder proto dot dunder proto. So I'm going two levels deep. So if I were to say EMP dot dunder proto dot dunder proto, I'm going to get 
the objects prototype. I can either access this or I can access the object dot prototype. I'm gonna make sure that's the same. So let me set that on the objects prototype. So I'm gonna say object dot prototype. I'm gonna call this the grandparent prop. Grandparent of employee, or let me actually just say grandparent. I'll tell you why in a minute. And now if I were to access emp dot grandparent prop, I'm gonna get back the property that we set on the objects prototype. This is the picture that's happening. So it's going here, doesn't find it, it goes here, doesn't find it here, it goes to the objects prototype. Now here is this implicit benefit, or I should say consequence of putting something on the objects prototype. Well, guess what happens if you put something on the objects prototype? You're essentially adding that property to every object in your system. So let's say I create a function foo, which is completely different, right? And I say var tmp equals new foo. Now guess what happens if I do tmp dot grandparent prop? I'm gonna get back the property that I added on the objects prototype because this link here is something that happens for every object. No matter what the function is, if you're calling it using a constructor, it's gonna have a prototype which you didn't create. So it was created using the object function. So it's done to proto is gonna to point to the object's prototype, whether you like it or not. So if you put something on the object's prototype, you're essentially creating a property for all your objects in the system. This is both good and bad. This is kind of like an equivalent of globals. You really don't wanna do that too much. You don't wanna abuse this power, but this is an indication of what happens in the JavaScript engine when you're accessing a property on an object. By default, if there's something on the object's prototype, it is gonna get accessed by every object that you create, unless that object has a property of the same name, in which case it just serves it directly and it doesn't go to the object's prototype. Or that object's prototype has a property of the same name, in which case also it doesn't go to the object's prototype. But if any of these objects don't have the property, it's always available in the object's prototype once you added it here. Now here's an interesting question. If this hierarchy is to happen always, then the object's prototype is also an object. Now wouldn't this have a dunder proto? But this should have a dunder proto and this should point to something else, right? So would this lookup be infinite? Well, it is not infinite because the prototype of the object has a dunder proto, which points to null. Okay, so this is something that the JavaScript engine implements by default so that this chain does not go on and on and on, right? So the object's prototype is where it ends. The global object function has a prototype and that prototype has a dunder proto which points to null. So it doesn't go beyond this. So this is where it ends. So this dunder proto points to null. So there is no opportunity for the JavaScript engine to look up further. So you can think of the object's prototype as kind of like the global grandfather of all objects in JavaScript. And uh, anytime you look up a property on an object, if it has it, it's gonna give it. And if it doesn't have it, it says, hey, wait, let me check with my dad and see if my dad has that property. Checks with dad. The dad says, okay, if I have the property, it's gonna give it. And it's gonna look as if the object had it all along. But if dad too doesn't have the property, it's gonna say, hey, I don't know what you're looking for. Let me check with granddad and see if granddad has a property. And now it's granddad is the object over here. And if granddad knows what to return, it's gonna get that property back. And if granddad too doesn't have that property, that's where you get undefined. Okay, so this happens for every object property lookup in JavaScript. It's all happening behind the scenes, so you wouldn't even know it. But once you start leveraging this feature by adding things on the objects prototype, then you are essentially creating properties that could be accessed by every object in your JavaScript environment.